All right, let's get started. Today, I'm gonna to share with you how to fill in an American Express small business credit card application. What many people don't realize is that business credit cards work a little bit differently than a personal credit card. For example, many banks do not report these balances and transactions or even the credit lines to your personal credit report. And this can be extremely beneficial when you're trying to get a small business or side hustle off the ground. For example, the other day I was doing a one-on-one -on -one consultation call with someone who had a question of how they could front a purchase order for a new business they were just getting off the ground. See, this artist was gonna take some of their designs and put them on things like clothing and apparel. And as a result, they knew that these pre-orders, once they fulfilled them, would already pay back the money they needed to spend and earn a profit. So not only would he be able to fulfill that purchase order and make those deliveries, but he'd also be doing it on a credit card with 0% interest for 12 months, no annual fee, a little bit of a sign-up bonus, and the potential to earn back rewards for whatever money he spends on there. Now that we've talked about some of the reasons you might wanna consider opening up a small business credit card, let's dive into the application for American Express. What I'm gonna do is have the application up on the screen here, so feel free to fill it in and follow along. And I'll leave a link down below to the application for that blue Business Plus card. All right, so after you click that link, it's gonna take you to a landing page that looks like this. You can see the card that's being offered is the Blue Business Plus card. There are some other ones. Uh, they have annual fees. That's why I'm recommending this one, and it has that 0% for 12 months. Go ahead and click Apply Now. You'll see right away there might be a pop-up that's asking you if you are already a card member. If so, feel free to just uh, log in with your user ID and password, and it's going to give you an answer in as little as 30 seconds. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna walk you through what it looks like to fill in the application itself. So let's start right here with your email address. Feel free to put whatever email you actually use in check. And what I mean by that, it does not have to be a business email address. It could be your personal email, the one that you use for correspondence. And this next part where it asks you to enter your business information is the part that trips people up the most. For example, if you are a sole proprietor, if you're an independent contractor, a gig worker, essentially if you're self-employed and work for yourself, then your legal business name is going to be your first and last name. So go ahead and type that in. Now on this application, you're going to notice that it automatically fills in your first and last name as the business name on the card. And that's exactly how it should be. I know some of us have different brands, like I have the teacher entrepreneurs. You might have something that you use to brand the honey that you make or the, the cookies that you bake. I don't know why that rhymed, but long story short, just put your name in both of these spots. Go ahead and check the box that says company does not have a DBA. That's something that you have to apply for and it takes effort getting, meaning you're gonna know if you have one. So most of us don't, just go ahead and check this box. Okay, moving down onto the next part of the application, it's gonna ask for your uh, business address. And it's okay just to go ahead and fill in your home street address, especially if you work from home. And on the next line, it's going to ask you for your zip code. I'm just gonna type in 90210. And what you'll notice when you type in yours is that it should automatically populate the city and the state. So for example here, 90210 is Beverly Hills, California. Up next is gonna ask for your business phone number. Feel free to go ahead and put down your cell phone number. Again, if you have a business line, you would know that. You can put that number in there. But again, they're looking to get in touch with you, send you text messages for verification purposes. So uh, just put down the number that you use most often. Up next for this drop down menu, they're gonna ask for your industry type. And again, people get a little tripped up on here, like they're afraid and intimidated to put the wrong answer. Well, just take a look at the choices. For example, someone like myself, I'm not in agriculture or construction. I wouldn't really pick any of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select other. Feel free to choose whatever you think most appropriately fits your line of business or choose other. And next we get to company structure. And again, this can be a little like tricky if you're not familiar with these terms, but go ahead and if you work for yourself 
and you're self-employed, like I'm talking about before, those uh, side hustles, those gig workers, those independent contractors, uh, feel free just to put down sole proprietor. Okay, for these next few boxes, it's just important to remember how long you've been in business and have a grasp of how much money you're actually bringing in. And sometimes those two things don't go hand in hand. For example, when it's asking for uh, years in business, sometimes you start planning a business, you buy the website, you go and test and experiment and get, get feedback from people and you're not really making any money. And, and But those years count. So for example, if you've been at something for a year or two and you haven't made any money yet, be honest and write down a year. If it's been longer than that or less, just again, be honest for, for what you're feeling right here. For a number of employees, put down one because you're gonna be considered the only employee. Of course, just like the other situations, if you have a W-2 employee on the books, then you can count them. You don't need to count people that you would just be paying or sending out a checks to for their services. Those are, those are not your employees. And this next number is gonna determine probably what sort of credit limit they give you. Now remember, this is American Express, so they're gonna ask maybe different questions than if you're filling out another application. For example, they wanna know how much revenue your business brings in. Now, if it's a newer business and you're only bringing in, let's say, a couple hundred a month or maybe a thousand a month, again, just be honest here. You can put in as little or as much as is accurate, and you just wanna be uh, on the up and up with this. For the sake of this application, I'll just write down 12,000, which would be $1,000 a month. For this next box, they wanna know your estimated monthly spend. Again, they're not asking for an annual here, so be careful. In the example I used in the beginning, uh, that purchase order was $10,000 to fulfill. So if you, knew, if you know you're gonna put on $10,000 and then pay it off and then put on, let's say, another 14,000, then you gotta do a little math here and write down estimated monthly spend of about $2,000 per month. For the sake of this application, I'll just write down $1,000 a month. Again, just be honest, if you know you have some big purchases you have to make, or you got some equipment to get the business off the ground, uh, just put down what you think you'll honestly spend on average each month. Okay, and this next drop down menu is going to ask you your role in the company. And typically, what I would end up choosing here would be owner. Again, it is up to you to decide what your title is. But in this case, if you're the only person working there, then you own the company and it's okay just to select owner. Okay, so this ends the business portion of the application. They have all the business information they need, and now they just need some personal information about you. Go ahead and fill in your first and last name as I did here, Rich Smith, but go ahead and put your own name. Similarly to when you filled in the business portion, you're gonna see that this is gonna pop up so that the name on the card matches who you are. You're gonna to need to be able to use that card when you go places. If anyone ever says, oh, can I see some ID to match the card? Make sure you're putting your own name on here. Now there is a box you can check that says your home address is the same as your business address. Of course, if for some reason that is different, you would know that, so I'm gonna go ahead and check this box that it is the same. You're gonna see that same information populate itself, and then if it did not auto-fill in for you, go ahead and put the cell phone number again, same one that you put before. For this next part, they are going to ask for your social security number. What they do is they verify your identity. You're applying for this card, even though it's a business card. And again, some of those benefits that we talked about before, it won't show up on your personal credit. They still need your social security number to verify your identity. After you fill in the social security number, they're going to match that with your date of birth. So go ahead and put that as well. And then this next portion is probably gonna make some of you feel pretty good if your business is newer and you're worried about getting approved for a business card. Now, let me explain. They're gonna ask for your total annual income. Now, if you look at this pop-up box, essentially they're asking you for all the income that you have access to, and that's in your household. So for someone, let's say, who is married or you work a few different jobs, they're gonna ask for all the income you make. And so if your business is brand new or it's only making a little bit, you can include that amount, but you can also include the other income that you have access to. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down $50,000. That takes into account the $12,000 business income that I mentioned before. 
and then I'm just making up that maybe I'm just like a, a young single person just starting out. But whatever is your situation, add up all that income and that inc can include income in your household. They also ask about non-taxable income. That probably does not apply. Uh, if it does to you, you can add that as well. And, and if you're curious what that means, you can just click on that little icon to see if it applies. And we are almost to the promised land. There is just one part of the terms and conditions that I wanted to point out to you here. You can see that it does say all cards issued on the account will only be used for commercial or business purposes. And the reason I wanted to point that out is I look at business cards as a great way to separate your personal spending from your business spending for reasons like accounting and bookkeeping. But along the same line, sometimes those lines can get a little blurred. Sometimes you're taking someone out to lunch and that's a business expense or perhaps you use your personal car for personal reasons, but also for business reasons. So they are asking you to keep this as separate as possible and that is gonna fall on your shoulders. All right, the last thing to do is hit submit application. All right, if you made it this far in the video, congratulations, you just applied for a small business credit card through American Express. I didn't really mention this in the beginning of the video, but American Express is going to be more likely to approve your first business credit card if you've never applied for one before. They just seem to be more open to allowing small business owners to get a line of credit. So I look at American Express as a great first business card for a lot of people out there. It starts to build that business credit history for you. And then when and if you want to get a card with another lender, there's a greater chance that you will be able to. And again, the blue business plus card that I mentioned is a great first card because it has that no annual fee. It's one you can keep for years to come. I think you earned something like 2x on all your spending and that first 12 months with zero interest on any of your purchases could really help catapult your business to a new level of momentum where you just keep growing and building uh, exactly the business that you want. All right, let's wind this thing down. If you like this style of video, please let me know in the comments. I feel like these tutorials can be, you know, a little dry but super helpful, so I just love your feedback. So, thanks. Also, if you're new to the channel, please be sure to like this video. It really helps with the algorithm. Uh, hit subscribe and ring that notification bell. It's interacting with you down in the comments and seeing that subscriber number grow, that really helps keep me going. Also, I mentioned it at the beginning of the video, I am offering private one-on-one -on -one consultation calls. If that's something that you might be interested in, I have a few slots available every single week, so I'll leave a link down below in the description for that as well. One last thing, our Facebook group just continues to grow and I am planning some webinars or Zoom calls in the future with the members of that group. So feel free to join that and you'll be invited to some of those events. All right, as always, I'm Rich and until next time.